A track with Falcons has produced a really great song mm. with uh, performances by Young Thug mm. and 24 Hours. Let me just say hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey everybody, my name is Eli Morgan Gessner and I am the style editor here at Uproxx. And today we have the wonderful story of a young Canadian boy who took his OCD and bad posture <laughs> and used it to become one of the greatest DJs of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's my old friend, DJ A-Track. Hi. You're a DJ. You were a five-time? World champion, yeah. DMC World Scratch champion. Yeah. It wasn't all DMC. I started scratching and messing around with DJing at 13, and then at 15, I was world champion, and I kept entering more battles, and I accumulated five of these world titles. <laughs> I didn't see much sunlight from the age of 13 to 15. <laughs> we all grew up listening to sort of classic rock and, you know, through like Beastie Boys and Cypress Hill, that was like the funnel to get into hip hop. I really fell in love with, with hip hop around 94 with Wu-Tang, Biggie, that whole era. So I'm listening to hip hop, right? And I'm hearing scratching on records. I tried playing the piano and I wasn't very good at it. Or I just it didn't feel like my instrument. And one day I tried scratching a record on my dad's record player and I discovered a knack. I showed my brother and his friends one day and they were like, yo, what the hell, you can scratch. We can't scratch, <laughs> what the hell? And, uh, and I started practicing every day and I would come home after school, practice, have dinner, do homework after dinner. And then that was my day, every day. I had this sort of general idea of making a skate video. I ended up making the video with them. The concept being that because of our relationship back at Zoo York in the 90s, I, uh, on the one hand, was like, oh, let's use the old Hi8 video camera that yeah. we shot all the original Zoo York footage with. It's the impossible video. Thug showed up on time, but there was a lot of hangout time in the van. At one point, you opened the door and said, guys, we're losing sunlight. They ran right out. We did the video for yep. the song. I hit you up, it was just sort of like, hey Eli, this is your world, can you help me figure this out? Yeah. And then you hit me back with the super duper dream reply of like, here's a test cut of like 20 seconds of this secret footage that no one's seen before that I just happened to be digitizing. How about we do that for your video? <laughs> and I still have the camera and we filmed Thug with that camera, and I'm reading my email and I'm like, brain explodes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Can I call yeah. you Eli? One thing that me and you have been talking about, and, and this is the current state of media and culture and music, which I've been a little bit like, uh, I don't know guys. It yeah. seems like the idea of we're trying to make something original has become uh, secondary to, I know y'all like this, so here it is again. Like that's kind of where I feel there's a shortcoming in culture. It's I not follow. like, oh, there's clearly Biggie Smalls and there's clearly Tupac and there's mm. clearly De La Soul and that's clearly Public Enemy. But you've always been more optimistic about it all. What I would say is that, in fact, right now in hip hop, there is something for everyone, for sure. And maybe you're referring to what a lot of people will call maybe SoundCloud rap, or just like a certain form of sort of druggy, very free kind of abstract rap. But there's that, but you can also go and listen to some rapidy rap too. Neo Soul is back, like there's something for everyone, sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. So, I don't know if, you, and, and by the way, when you were saying that, you know, maybe that type of, of rap, you seem to be hinting that it's less original. That's not, that's not really what I'm, I'm getting at. And I'm sure like anything, it's like people being like, you're a DJ, like mm. on the radio DJ contest? Yeah, yeah. It's, now you people know, it's... will be like, oh, you're a rapper, do you sip lean and, and is your name little something? Yeah, that's But what by I'm the saying. way, part of what's cool, even about that scene, is that being weird is celebrated and it took hip hop a long time to break through to that then when people were like, oh, this worked for that guy, I'm gonna do something quite similar. But That's I don't, think, where I I don't even think people approach, approach it with that much of a sort of uh, cheapish sameness. I think it really is legitimately that there's, this is a culture. And you know, there's 
if, if someone's listening to a certain kind of music and then they, they have aspirations to make that music, maybe their first couple of records will sound like what they listen to. One of the differences between now and the 90s is that that first song that someone makes, the whole world gets to hear it. Whereas back then you had to get a record deal and you wouldn't hear it until they honed their skills. Yeah, the but a A&R lot of the guys that get dismissed bro. now for being samey, a year later develop their own identity. Oh, it's just that the, the, the removal of the gatekeepers huh. and everything just being posted on SoundCloud That's right away, you get to see that development stage. Right. You know what, another thing that's fascinating by the way is like a lot of the rappers who seem to have basic skills are actually a lot more skilled than they give out the impression mm. and they choose to make this just kind of rap ignorant. because there's an immediacy that yeah. is yeah. super punk rock and undeniable. So it's funny hearing some of those rappers who might get popular from having a song where they're just going over like a distorted 808. Sure. That's a brand new mom, man. I told him Will. And then you can you can interview one of these guys, and he'll be like, "Oh, but I also have." So, what's the term? It's not backpack rap. I'm trying to think of the term that's... Lyricist rap? But it's funny, like I saw an interview with XXXTentacion where he was like, oh, I have like Earl type raps. Because Earl Sweatshirt <laughs> sure, is, yeah, yeah. you know, is, is lyrical. Yeah, and then yeah. I've heard those records and it's true. So a rapper who might be known for mm. blown out, distorted, and kind of ignorant records is also fully capable of making rapidly I'm ass sure, rap I'm sure records. They are. So when some of the old heads will just say like, oh, what happened to skills? It's more, it's deeper than that. It's, it's a conscious decision to make records that translate in a live setting. And by the way, live rap is blowing up too. Molecules, Let's talk about this. Me and you both have had the distinction of working with Mr. Kanye West. Yours was far more successful than mine was, <laughs> but he was smart enough to pick you. Damon, at that point in time, was starting a sort of offshoot imprint mm -hmm. that was supposed to be their literally rock and like rock label. And the day before Kanye saw me in London, Damon Dash saw me. Mm. And he wanted me to DJ for Samantha. Maybe not knowing that she was actually a DJ as well. <laughs> and Damon kept trying to pair us for about 24 hours until I met Ye. Right. He was really heavy handedly trying to be yeah. like, Samantha. This guy, A Track, he's a really good DJ. He's gonna DJ for you, it's gonna make your show cool. And she was like, Dame, I'm a DJ, I know DJs, but she didn't really want me to DJ for her. And uh, I was just sort of like, wait, I think I know your brother, and this whole thing. And then next thing you know, I met Ye, and he was like, you're gonna DJ for me. And then as it turns out, we're having this conversation at this whole Rockefeller thing, shindig. Mm. And so Dame's also somewhere, and Samantha's also somewhere, and Kanye and I are talking, and we're making our master plan, and he's like, Da, da, da. I'm gonna take you on tour and the crowd's gonna do this and say that, take this guy's number, he's my manager. And then Dame sees what's going on, and I'll always remember this, he screams, he goes, Samantha, you see what's happening? Kanye is about to hire a track That's why he's Kanye West. I was trying to have you work with a track but Kanye West is stealing a track from you right now, Samantha. It's so dumb. And both she and I knew that, that this Kanye thing was probably best for everyone. Oh my you God. What up, this is A-Track and you're on Uproxx.